Dear Captain, Banelings are just OP. I started with a golden double proxy reaper, where my micro was close to perfect, only losing all of my reapers to some links and a queen. Now, these two sentences are mutually exclusive. If your micro is close to perfect, you wouldn't lose all of your reapers to some links and a queen. But whatever. After I scouted exactly what he was doing, Zerg's constant pressure made it so I could never leave the map to attack. Even though I built full blue flame hellions, mines and thors, the perfect counter to his Ling Bane Mura camp, I was forced to turtle up as he sent unending waves of units. I trades so efficiently, but he just had too many units in his never ending swarm. So, is Zerg Imba? It is. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye bye. Or do I just suck? Asked by the Stud Muffy, a Terran player in silver on the North American ladder. And here we are in the game between the Stud Muffy, here in the bottom right is our red Terran, and Fuzzy Wuzzy as our blue Zerg player. Uh, great names, by the way, for both of them. Fairly impressive that silver players apparently just have more time on their hands to make good names. <laughs> <laughs> I like that he's elongating his time where he's in the vision range as well rather than going oh crap I've been spotted look at this look at this look how painfully long this takes here he gets spotted uh, yeah, somewhere around here he walks he's like oh crap I got spotted I can't build it here and rather than just moving to the right side he moves all the way through the vision of the overlords to the left also I mean, to be fair, to be fair to the stud Muffy, how could he have figured out where that first Overlord was gonna go? I mean, yes, the Overlord almost always goes in a straight line to the natural of the Terran player, or at least initially makes that th this type of line and then maybe go to the right to scout proxy Rexes. So I guess it was difficult to predict because this only happens in 95 to 98% of all ZVTs where the first Overlord makes this type of move. But ay ay ay, that is it. That is a very painful start. That is actually a very painful start. It got spotted, but I'm not sure if it got spotted spotted. I don't think it did, because it's just a straight up hatch first coming out of Fuzzy Wuzzy. He saw the SCV, he's like, ah, it's just an early scout to make sure I didn't have a third base, or whatever it would have been. So instead we're just seeing a, I mean, a proxy 2 Rex is always going to be powerful against the hatchery first. Now there is a... Is this a fast gas? This is, is this gas in time? I'm not sure if this gas is in time actually. I think it might be in time. Yeah. There will be some downtime on this initial barracks. There's no second gas on the way. So I guess it's just... Oh, there's going to be a gas on the way right now. So it's going to be a, a, a bunch of Reapers here. Exactly like the stud Muffy said in his palace complaint form. The, ner the near perfect micro with the Reapers, into losing all of them to some links and a queen, I think, is what he said. Bunker, I like this actually. Just building it behind, so that drones don't see it. Now, usually Zergs kind of have their Overlord near their natural, so this type of stuff, they, it, it can be sneaked in, you know? That's a big deal when this does happen, because you can pull the drones against that, that Bunker is going to finish up. Nice little start here for the stat movie. I really do like that. Forgets to start the Orbital Command, which is an issue in my mind. Um, and in the mind of every Terran that has ever lived. The reason for that is because whenever you get an orbital command, that just means you're going to end up getting, what, like 225 minerals uh, every 64 seconds out of a mule. So it's an investment that pays off within a minute. So uh, Unless you're planning on just killing your opponent with your 2-rex proxy reaper, it's almost always just straight up going to be worth it. Um, <clears throat> and also, with this builder, you're just floating money, so you might as well, right? It's not like this is some... Uh, some three racks marine stuff or four racks marine stuff or maybe you can't quite afford it although i think with most builds honestly terran always gets it reaper being controlled relatively well um the macro is not being controlled quite as well we're seeing some uh, some major flotation here some major major flotation of the money let's just say uh if stud muffy was on water right now he'd be, he'd be rising to the top my friends he would not drop down like a rock closer to wood it's the consistency of wood or the, what you get, the density of wood. You know, it just floats on top of water. That's what he's doing right now. Because he's floating a crap ton of money. 600 minerals. 
Still no orbital command. Um, now we finally start sending uh, workers into gas. That means that a factory or of course a command center on the high ground is possible. Um, I do kind of like the command center on the high ground because I think that Stadmafi scouted the fact that there was a, a fast speed being researched. And that means that if you do get a command center on the on the low ground, is that potentially could get taken out. So this bunker is going to get... Oh, I'm surprised to see these Reaper go in there. It felt like this position has been severely compromised at this point. Well, still three Reapers alive. This is actually actual... This is, this is one hell of a bunker, by the way. <laughs> what is this bunker defending? It's like defending two buildings that can float away. Like this is one of these positions where you really don't care about it. So let's just analyze this position for a second, okay? So if you're a Zerg player and you see a bunker here, you literally do not care about this whatsoever. This, this is a red herring bunker. You see this and you might think that there's something important there, but this is just an area you don't need to go. You can take this as a third base. You can take this as a third. You can basically expand three, four, five, and then once you got five bases, you can think about taking out this bunker. Before that, there's no priority here whatsoever. This sometimes happens though, is where people attack into this anyway, because they believe it's important. It's like when you're having a... Before we continue with the captain's great next analogy, I would like to briefly mention what's happening on screen, because... As you can see, the Zerg is trying to get the high ground to prevent a Reaper jump in in the main. But this little elevating platform right here is just a visual asset and cannot be used by the Reaper. In fact, it is impossible to jump from that very low ground in the back into the main base. There's absolutely no way for the Reaper to go up but the ramp. And the same goes for the other side on the left. It also is impossible to jump from that back third into the natural. So if the Reapers go back there, they pretty much lock themselves in and the only thing you need to guard is the ramp. But I guess our Zerg player just is a great Star Wars fan and always has to keep the high ground. Back to you, Kevin. It's like when you're having a, 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 a fight about like who's supposed to do the laundry. And in the, the heat of the fight, all of a sudden you find yourself defending the use of green jalapeno peppers um, as a potent laxative or something like that. Which is not, it should not be used as a potent laxative. It should be used to make your food slightly more spicy. Uh, although sometimes it, it doubles as well as a as a laxative in some scenarios in the end of the day yeah you know you have to do the laundry and you lose the argument about the jalapeno peppers and that's what ends up happening as well if you attack this type of bunker there's really no point to it just stick to the script and the script here for the zerk is going to be just to expand to third the fourth basis um, and that type of stuff meanwhile at home for the terran we have one factory done a second factory on the way, so I'm kind of feeling Blue Flame Hellions here as a as a follow-up. I'm loving this bunker. I, I Right now, this SCP is like, why did I build this bunker here again? I can't, I just remember getting the, the instructions for it, and I followed them. But what are we defending here? What is the strategical purpose of this bunker? Look at this. He's actually trying to... Is he setting up an attack here on the bunker? And he's, he's spotting it right now. It's like, hmm, that looks interesting. Maybe you should go for it. Pulls the queens for this as well. That is a wild move, no? Like bunker's gone. Was well, an illusion after all. Fantastic stuff. Okay, it's going to be Blue Flame Hellion. Oh, I thought the first thing he built was a reactor, but it actually was a, uh, a tech lab. All of this is being completely spotted, by the way, by uh, Fuzzy Wuzzy, who has uh, had some good overlords uh, just seeing absolutely everything. I would love to just see a single marine being built here just for that. Yeah, I think these two marines... I completely agree with this call. At the same time, I also wouldn't mind getting a third CC here in the far back. Uh, you already have your natural up and running. You have your main base up and running. You already have good production. You don't really need to add on to that. Especially not before getting a third base. Often Terran players get like a 1-1-1 one, one, one type of setup against Zerg and then get that third base already. So, uh, I mean, a third base in my mind uh, is long overdue. I appreciate the effort you're putting into getting a lot of Hellions out because that is really what you're doing. Which also is, honestly, on this map, quite a debatable choice. I just have to admit it here. Like, just just, ta just take a look at how this map tends to play out, okay? What is the goal with Hellions? A lot of Hellions in the early game is often to deal damage. Now, this is legitimately... Nah, not the... Yeah, probably the worst map, actually, for it. 
that and stargazers because you can defend three bases by having a bunch of queens or a wall with like a rose warren and an evo chamber or a baling nest and an evo chamber in the wall and then the hellions can't get in anymore so that makes any type of mess hellion build on this particular map fairly weak so the strategical choices here um that stud muffy is is making are fairly odd i'm also surprised they were seeing just straight up hell you never see this you never see this do do hellbats take longer to build than hellions i bet they do i don't know why but i have a, a feeling about it i think hellions take 18 seconds no and hellbats take 21 I'm now not. I'm starting to second second guess myself. Starting to doubt myself whether Hellions actually take 21 seconds or 18. I wish I could see another Hellion in production, but so far it's only Hellbat. I'm sure we'll see a Hellion later on, though. Not too worried. We can always figure it. We'll we'll table this for now. Double Medifex as well. Oh, this is just going to be a straight up Hellbat attack. Hellbats with Medifex for healing. This is fantastic. <clears throat> I also like the the depot drops being used here. No third base yet. For uh, for the stat mafi. Interesting to see here. Liberator coming out as well. No scouting, of course. No idea what's going on. No idea of a third base. I mean, you have one of the most powerful map control units in the Hellion. Haven't used it once. Instead, we're going for a double drop. Now, let's take a look at the actual situation here. What would have happened if 10 Hellbats with Blue Flame, uh, supported by two Medivacs, would have made their way across the map? In combination with these five reapers as well they would have straight up won the game there's absolutely nothing here that can defend the push fuzzy wuzzy is playing extremely greedy and the stud muffy look at this look at the investment that the stud muffy made in things that aren't eco triple factories we have a starport out as well and an armory is out and then we're getting a third cc so you'd say okay this is an aggressive build where you want to deal damage to slow down your opponent's eco or straight up kill your opponent but this couldn't be further from the truth this is actually just a, har a harassment build and a harassment build in this case makes no sense whatsoever because your opponent has so many more workers if you invest this much in infrastructure initially that you'll need to kill 40 workers to be even now four hellbats with blue flame are very good and we can actually see them dealing a a fair bunch of damage but i mean queens are a thing and they're just going to be capable of taking this out so far i think what like maybe you killed like seven eight extra drones or so it's just not enough fuzzy wuzzy is also floating a crap ton of money scouted the spire though we see an immediate tor coming out as a response i do like that double tor being uh queued up so this is a terran trick this is this is how they make terran propaganda not many people know this actually but the way that terran propaganda is created is that they'll take these screenshots of like a stat mafi will do this right he'll take a screenshot of his own bank and compare it to the zerg bank look how much better my macro is but then in reality terrans will have like 17 scv skewed up or in this case just an extra tour over here is these type of is it is the types of tricks that terrans will use to pretend like they have good macro i sometimes also see this in pro games where there's just like five scv queued up and they say man this terran is macroing so perfect look at the money it's like 12 marines being built in one barracks without a reactor it's like all right buddy calm down it's not that great my macro it's just you know you can queue up it's different another thing that is very interesting to me here by the way is the fact that the stud muffy mentioned constant pressure being put on by the zerg well, in reality, the Zerg in the first 9 minutes and 13 seconds has put in exactly zero pressure. None. Absolutely none. So, if you were to make kind of like a pressure skill and compare it with real life events, you'd have like being the president of a, a big and powerful country is very high up there, you know, or being a football player um, while 80,000 people are watching. Like, I can imagine there's a lot of pressure on you there but what the stud muffy currently has experienced is a lot closer to being a casual hockey sack player hacky sack hockey sack need a little thing at like a, a family reunion or something like that you're playing with your cousin and your brother and and maybe your dad it's like no real competition no one's even really keeping track of the score and if you miss the, the what's it called the sack then i guess or the hacky i don't know what it's called it's like the little the little bag i guess that would be called the sack and inside are the hackies wouldn't surprise me where was i in my story right the amount of pressure that you're feeling is is closer to a family reunion hacky sack uh face off with your cousin and your brother 
than it is to, uh, let's say, being the president of the United States of America. Right? There's just not a whole lot of pressure here on the stuff, Muffy. And I don't think he can claim otherwise. I really like this uh, dedication to the floor is lava as well. There's some good cosplaying coming out of uh, the stuff, Muffy. I also really like the fact that um, he, he kind of figured out how to how to battle the fake news and how to battle like a like like this information. He figured out that if he just doesn't get any information whatsoever, he also can't be tricked. It is absolutely brilliant. He, smart man. It's the equivalent of just shutting off the internet because you get tricked by one fake news article. You're like, all right, no more scouting for me. I've been tricked too, one too many times in my career. And he's really struggling. What are these stores here? I love the priority. Look at that. Look at his priority seeking here. He's like 15 Muras fighting with the three Liberators. You have these two massive guys with guns. They're trying to chase an overlord towards the right side. <laughs> <laughs> trying to deny scouting of the of the Ford gas. Oh no, he might see that I have three SUVs in it. He could make the call that I'm playing Mac. It's like, all right, calm down, buddy. <laughs> this is a really poor defense. I love that he actually had the Thors ready as well for the Muras because he saw the Spire earlier, um, but then still didn't have anything. Like, there was no turrets in position in the... No, oh, maybe there was one. Maybe he lost it. Can't recall that. I think there might have been a turret there. There was no turret in the third base, though. That's one thing I do know for sure. Oh, here comes the drop. Right. A brilliant move as well, actually. I hadn't thought of this, but going in with four Metafax, uh, filled with eight Hellbats, while your opponent is playing Muralis, that is the type of move that you just need some, some big brain for that. I, I didn't mention it earlier, but um, w whenever people send in an imbalance complaint form, they also have to write down their email. And I won't reveal the email of the stud Muffy because you guys might flame him. But I will say that uh, the number 57 was in there. And what I thought was that we might have one of the oldest people, you know, like what, 66 or so, th that's playing StarCraft. I was like, ah, oh, it's his, his, his birth year. I thought I was kind of excited by it. You know, it's like a, it's an old fella just playing StarCraft in silver. But now I'm starting to believe that, that the 57 might actually be just stud muffy bragging about his iq because so far this game the the level of decisions has been extremely low just extremely low it's kind of painful to watch here <laughs> how are these stores never in position how is it possible 22 muras have gone down and out of those 22 muras only seven have been killed by Thors. That means that turrets and liberators did the rest. I don't even understand that. <laughs> the wall is up as well. Oh, no. <laughs> the sickest thing is that there's no reason for this wall to even be be down. Because Stud Muffy hasn't moved out in the past seven minutes. Except for when he did it with Medivax. So there's absolutely no point. See some nice splits as well here on the Banix. Oh, no. I hate it when I forget to lift my 400 mineral structure. To be fair, Orbital Commands only have 1500 HP. So, Stud Muffy had, what, like maybe 6 or 7 seconds to respond. That is fairly little time for someone with the reaction speed of, of Stud Muffy. But maybe it's both. Maybe he, he just has slow responses because he's like 66. But he the reason why the 57 was in his email address is because he also has 57 IQ. It's like a double, you know? Sometimes people just get lucky like that when they have a double in life. When one number represents two things at the same time. Ah, uh, I wish I was as lucky as Stad Muffy. Here I am. Born in 94 with an IQ of 185. Stop the cap. If only I was so lucky as Stad Muffy. Life ain't fair. Okay, Burrow being researched here for the Fuzzy Wazzy. Who's, by the way, doing a great job expanding. Creep spread. Well, let's not talk about that. It's not been great, but... The expanding I've been a fan of. I really have been a fan of that. Uh... Mine's doing some work. Love the positioning of them as well. 27 meters have gone down. Uh, Stud Muffy not quite understanding that this game perhaps is over. As uh, he's technically right now on two bases. But the Thors might actually... This is a queen walk. This has to be the latest queen walk I've seen in my life. This wasn't like a queen broodlord timing, which you sometimes see. You know, This was like a legit Ling Bane Muta queen walk. 
the queen started walking as well at like the nine minute mark but because there's no creep on the map or overlord highway uh overlord speed highway you know there's uh yeah it took him a while to get there this was an anticipated queen attack sadly this base was already gone what are these vikings doing 58 binglings on the way holy crap that's kind of wild look at the amount of uh, energy we have as on the orbitals i don't quite understand how that is possible I feel like that is one of the things that you definitely would kind of get at this point. Now it's like, okay, I have, well, actually, there's a lot of, how is it possible that he's floating money when he's mining with 24 SCVs? Well, he's not even really mining with 24. Where are the SCVs? What? Oh, they're all just idling. Yeah, I was wondering, all right, I saw like two SCVs here and I saw like, like six SCVs mining this patch. I was like, well, how is this possible? But I guess they were just all idling. Legitimately, like, 75% of his workforce idling. It's like visiting France. It's insane. Every single time in my life that I've visited France, public transport is striking. It hasn't... I've been to France, like, six or seven times. And every single time, like, your train will get cancelled because there's a strike going on. Do French people actually work or do they just pretend to? You do see people, like, walking around there in business suits as well. But because it's in Paris, it might also just be because... You know, it's like a fashion week or something like that. He's trying to look good. I'm not completely... Uh, my working theory is that there's no work being done in France on a daily basis. But I'm open. I have an open mind to, uh, to different theories as well. If you, for example, have a theory on what happens in France on a weekday, be sure to leave that down in the comments. I'm curious to hear what you all have to think about that. If you've ever been to France, of course. I don't know French bashing if you haven't been there. It's an acquired taste. That you don't really understand unless you've, you know, unless you've been there. You need to get it. It's a feeling, okay? French bashing. You need to be there to, to get the street cred for it. Otherwise, it ain't fair. Now, this game is extremely over. And the only reason why the stud Muffy currently is staying in is because this is his first ladder game. Um, that wasn't in the imbalance complaint form, but I figured it out. This is his first ladder game, and the stud mafia believes that this is similar to the co-op mission, where you have to defend the main building for 25 minutes, and if you manage to do that, you win the game, no matter how crap your performance was before that. As long as that main building survives, he's all good. In this case, he's like, oh, I can build multiple main buildings, this is fantastic. This mission is way easier than co-op. Um, <laughs> well, in reality, his opponent currently has actually, let's do some counting with Kevin. New segment. Da, 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 da. Counting with Kevin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven bases for Fuzzy Wuzzy. Oh my, he really messed it up, didn't he? Told ya. No point. Against one, two, three, for the stat mafia that was counting with kevin back to you oh back to myself really should have dressed up again uh, i miss dressing up as different people and talking to myself always uh you know felt like i had some friends <laughs> recording these conversations <laughs> hearing nothing back but then in the editing room it all comes together and that's what really matters this is one i i love that uh, fuzzy wuzzy doesn't really want this game to end He's like mining more in this game than he has in the past 75 games combined. It's like, oh, usually I get like like one base or two base all in, but this is fantastic. He's like just practicing his macro, like building more drone space. It's 96 workers, eight more, no problem. Plus two on the way as well. Oh, this is an interesting uh, command. It's like a move command through the wall. That doesn't quite work. Holy crap. I wonder what the actual resource is lost. The resource is lost isn't even that bad. Like, it's not good, don't get me wrong, but you would have thought that it would be a little bit better. But I guess it really isn't. 103 workers are out right now for Fuzzy Wuzzy. No upgrades, which does disappoint me a little bit. There's two Evo Chambers, I'd love to see a second Spire as well. I like this getting plus two uh, a flyer attack. Well, in my mind, he's never going to build a Muta in his life. Because every single time he builds Mutas, he just flies them into mines. There's still 15 mines remaining. Have we had a single Overseer yet? No. Do we actually think that Fuzzy Wuzzy is aware of detection and how that works? I'm not sure if that's... Like, what leak do people become aware of, like, things like detection? I I think pretty... Like, 
it's one of the more important rules now is that that you can see invisible stuff because otherwise you just die i remember this absolutely frustrated the ever-living crap out of me when i started playing starcraft I think there's legit invisible units and if you don't have something to see them you lose the game i always thought it was fairly broken until i started spamming dt builds myself and then all of a sudden i started liking starcraft a whole lot more i like that this base stayed up as well honestly if you just look at the supply and not at the mini map or at the bank um or at the worker count or actually not even at the supply if you look at the army supply currently you might think that the terran is winning but you would be mistaken because there's currently a, an 11k 4k bank for the zerg player while there is well, also, it's actually a 2k bank, or 1k, 1k bank here for Stadmafi. Which is fairly impressive. 11 more drones. And a second layer. This is the type of spending that you only do when you have too much money, you know? It's like people buying a second yacht. It's like, do you really need a second yacht? Like, you already had one. So you can't just rent a second yacht. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Also... Yachts in general don't make a lot of sense. Like the the concept of a of a yacht just is very very odd to me. I guess it's just feeling safe maybe for very rich people like on a yacht in the middle of the sea. But then again, if you're an absolute billionaire, the people that will want to take you out are also going to be very rich, so they can just shoot you down with from like a helicopter or something, like some special some special mission team coming to catch you on your yacht. But what's the point? It's just like a crap house. It's on water. Like, it's way more expensive to build than a house of the same size. And it's going to be worse as well because you're on water. You can get seasick. What if you get a medical emergency? Like, that type of stuff. I never quite understood yachts. I don't quite understand keeping all the halibuts in the same position so the bailing splash deals more... <laughs> so the bailing splash deals more damage. But then again, I'm also not a uh, a brilliant Terran player like Stadmafi is. I like that he's continuously walling, though. If there's one thing that Stadmafi has done well, and right now, according to my count, he has done exactly just a single thing correct, that would be the walling here. Is that he continuously re-walls it, and he understands the importance of walling. Now, to be fair, this is a fairly easy wall to make. Uh, you just four depots, so it's very easy. Unlike a lot of Protoss balls, which are harder to make with pylons and stuff. Ooh. God, this is an actual meat grinder. Like an actual meat grinder. It's only 11k difference, though. Oh! We need to add some bases to the count? Oh my god, I can't even recall where I ended last time. Did I count this already? This? I can... I don't know. How many bases are on this map? That would have been easier to count. Oh, it's, it's, it's a bit overwhelming for me right now. There's so many blue dots on the minimap that I quite honestly feel afraid to... Uh, yeah, I, I feel very, very afraid to start counting. Well, like, what if I miss one and people will make fun of me? I'm, I'm not down with that, that's for sure. Pathogen glands? Of course. I'm getting all these upgrades for units that I know he's not going to build. This is like some high-level posing, you know? This is not real. Like, I know there's not going to be investors or more Mudas, but he got plus two armor for the Mudas. I still don't really believe that there is uh, overseers on the way. Oh, here we go. Okay, that was a really bad fight. I'm almost starting to believe. And the 25 minute is, is, is getting close. So right at this point in the game, the stud mafi was getting ready. He was like, oh my god, this was the big final wave. You know, at the end in the co-op mission, there's like drop pots coming from the sky. That's also why he left the main, the mines in the main base. And the reaper there is like, oh, what if there's a drop pod in my main base? He's like, this is brilliant. He's already preparing for this stuff. I really, really do like that. There's some brilliant stuff. He's like just walling again and again. It's like doing the countdown. 52, 51, 50. Meanwhile, the big final wave is being set up. 2-2 two, two halfway done. Seven more helmets being produced. Bam! Another command center. I'm so rich anyway. I'll morph it into a planetary. I'll float it to the corner. Just 35 more seconds and I got it. Another refinery. Oh. Is this the first time Fuzzy Wuzzy sees this base? I think it might have been, now. I think it might have been. 
The stat mafia still is not worried at this point. He's like, ah, this is fine. I don't need this. I still have three commands. Now two command senders over here. It's all good. Oh my god. It's gonna be another one of these, isn't it? Ooh. Sheesh. <laughs> As the zoomers would say. Yeah, right now the countdown is truly happening here for stat mafia. Four, three, two, one. One. Well, what a big win there for the Terran player. Very, very impressive. That no, just kidding. All right, let's get back into it. <laughs> Got him. People that weren't paying attention for a bit had me on on the background. Absolutely in shambles right now. Oh, is this the first move out? I think this is legitimately the first move out that the Stat Mafia has done in well ever since the Reapers. I oh oh no, the Hellbat drops. I forgot about the Hellbat drops. How could I? How could I have forgotten? About the hellbat drops. Oh, harsh them. You silly goose. You silly, silly goose. Four more Thors on the way as well. You know, the funny thing is, is this is an army that could almost beat the opponent's army. No, it could. It actually could. Look at this. 11 hellbats? If the mines were here especially, and if there were more hellbats, why the hell? No, no. Fight. Fight the links! If all of these were hellbats and in position, I think these links could have died. Legitimately. If the mines were there, definitely. Okay, now this that this push is gone. This is starting to feel a little bit like the Black Knight in Monty Python. You know? The stud Muffy believes it's just a flesh wound, but in reality his ha his heart has stopped beating like 25 minutes ago or so. Now stand aside, worthy adversary. Tis but a scratch. A scratch? Your arm's off. No, it isn't. Well, what's that then? I've heard worse. The moment the, the, the Proxy Rex Reaper stopped working. 45k against 27k. So he's almost... Well, well Fuzzy Wuzzy is doubling the resources lost. But at the same time, he's also like quadrupling the amount of bases that the Stud Mafia has had. Because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 bases. I did that very fast. Oh, I forgot to do the the jingle. Ah, the Counting with Kevin jingle. A modern day classic. I considered selling selling the, the Counting with Kevin concept to, to TV studios. Or maybe to Netflix. But I don't think the world is ready for this yet. We have another attack. One of my favorite things... I kind of want to just show this fight again. My favorite thing is that the stud Muffy, rather than... Uh, then just closing the wall entirely leaves one open because he knows that Fuzzy Wuzzy will go for a move command in. So then you keep the, the small funnel for longer. If you full wall, there's a good likelihood that the Banelings bust through it immediately and then there's a bigger hole. You know, because you kill two depots at the same time or three depots at the same time. So that's actually a pretty clever move. Um, I believe that clever move is unintentional. Uh, the only reason I believe it's unintentional is because we haven't seen any other clever moves yet. And clever moves are something that is kind of related, you know? Like, you, certain things in life, it, it's, like, it's like random. You, you don't know, like, the things aren't necessarily completely connected to one another. Um, but usually when it comes to intelligent plays, these things are connected. It's the same with intelligent thought. And uh, so far the stud mafi has shown very little when it comes to this. Although, I have to admit, I like the planetary. I'm a fan of the planetary in this position as well, because this position has seen a lot of blood. This position has seen so much blood. Oh, I don't like how close the mines are to the planetary. That I do not enjoy as much. Because then with the bailing splash, they get taken out. And one of the big things of these mines is, is because there is no overseers, these mines have been way too uh, efficient. If these bad boys would have been here from the start, like just on the low ground for the past 15 minutes or so, ever since the, the Muras died, I feel like they would have been helpful. I actually really believe it would be helpful. I'm also thinking, is the planetary actually good? I think the answer might be no, because it's a structure that can be taken out relatively quickly. And it makes the stud Muffy feel more secure in the forward position, while he should be hiding behind the wall. And shooting stuff from there. I like that there's a tank now. That's a really high tier decision making. Poof! 
40 kills. What is this? No way. What? This mine has 91 kills. I clicked it before it died. It had 101. I've never seen a mine with 101 kills. That is actually the most insane thing ever. No? I think this is the highest... This is a world record, my friends. This is actually a world record mine. Look at this guy. Poof. 101 is what I saw. Yeah. Before he dies due to the bailing splash. I actually cannot believe that. 101 kills. That is crazy. That is more kills than the stat mafia has brain cells. And IQ. Combined. <laughs> Got him. 102 workers left for the fuzzy wuzzy. This is a fantastic game. I feel like it's slowly but surely creeping towards an end though. Um, as Well, the economic for situation for the stat mafia is rather dire at this point. There's nine more drones. <laughs> Fuzzy Wuzzy just continues with the drones as well. He's like, ah, I feel like the one thing I'm currently lacking is not tech or maybe better upgrades or hive. No, it's always, oh, yeah, that's a hive. He's getting the better upgrades. Oh my God, I said nothing. Or maybe, you know, brute lords or infestors or roaches or ravagers. He's like, no, the one thing I need right now is nine more drones. I just love that he you know, has a plan and he sticks with it. The plan is Ling Bailing drone and sticking with the plan. I'm a huge fan of that. What do you say again? Don't fix it if it ain't broke. And... I mean, this strategy definitely ain't broke. It might be broken, because it's very overpowered. According to the stat mafia, of course. That's still a claim we're looking into right now. Don't forget that. Don't forget the the entertaining... Uh, the entertaining factor here. It, it might be... Uh, you know, kind of uh, obfuscating. Nice word. Obfuscating. Uh, the fact that we're also doing uh, on a very serious endeavor here, and that's trying to figure out whether this is imbalanced or whether the stat mafia sucks. And we need to take all evidence into account. Ah, no, the drones get taken out. Better rebuild those. We only have 102 left. While our opponent is mining with six workers. Or, well, uh, mining with two. Ooh, eBay's. It's like there's more HP, more bang for your buck when it comes to walling. I like that. A little bit late into the game to think of that when you have 53 supply. I mean, he knows... Okay, this just doesn't make any sense to me. What is this? He knows that there are bases here. He sees the creep here as well. He knows this. He is fully aware of how crap his position is. Why are we still in here? Maybe he just doesn't value his own time very much. Surely there are better ways to spend your time than this. Like you know it ain't working. Some nasty mind shots. 75! <laughs> 75 GG! Fool! <laughs> How is he the fool? This is coming from the guy that stayed in the game that, that was over 18 minutes ago. Holy crap! How dare you complain about any other race? If Terran has this many good defensive setups, that it was impossible for our brilliant Zerg player, Fuzzy Wuzzy, to finish this game. He was up, legit, with like nine bases. He had nine more bases than you. He didn't just have nine bases, no. He had nine more. He had 13 bases. You had four at the end. You didn't even mine from one of the bases. You didn't even completely mine it out. This is insanity. You just... You just... You just wasted Fuzzy Wuzzy's time. And this person, Fuzzy Wuzzy, is a, a very solid member of society. You can feel it, you know? He's doing good things for the world. He's smart, he's fast, he builds links and bane links. He loves a good economy. He's huge onto the economy. But you, all you do is you spam mines, hellbats and tors. Your tors are absolutely never in position for the mutas ever. You, you freaking scout the spire. And you still manage to lose infinite workers to mutales. You never move out on the map. You open up with a freaking triple factory double reactor build. And you take no map control with a unit whose entire purpose is to take map control. The hellion or the hellbat. You could have killed your opponent with an initial hellbat push extremely easily. Even with your micro, which to be fair has been... Extremely bad. They just got awful. I don't think I've seen a single split on any of your Hellbats. And yes, I also haven't seen a single split out of your opponent. But your opponent actually was macroing during it. Uh, and doing other things. You weren't macroing. You weren't microing. I'm starting to believe that you were doing one of those challenges. Where 
you do multiple games at the same time and not just two games i believe that you are doing a challenge where you're playing nine or ten games at the same time doing like a Trackmania race winning a game of dota 2 playing league of legends with like your left pinky the same like your feet you're playing like some racing game or whatever like everything at the same time and then you lost this game it's like oh this looked pretty broken i don't understand how you can ever in a million years complain if this is legitimately how you play there's no sense of build order there's no sense of any decision making or coherent decision making that makes any type of sense to me you my friend suck and you suck extremely hard and that is it all right um yeah that is actually it as well rather long episode of iotis i'm sorry for that i don't uh i don't i don't enjoy that either these long episodes you know they they hurt my brain this type of games um oh also final thing uh if you think that 57 is the birth year, the year of birth of, uh, what's it called? Stuffy Muffy? Stat Muffy? The Stat Muffy? Uh, leave that down in the comments below. If you think it says IQ, also leave that in the comments. If you have a better theory, be also sure to tell me that in the comments. I'm very curious. I'm a big comment reader. I don't know if people know this, but I love the comments. Uh, but usually there's no questions that I ask to be answered. But today, two questions. I can't remember the first one anymore, but two questions for the comments. That will be it. Uh, like the video and share it with your friends it's also important especially if they haven't played starcraft before and just keep sending it again and again if they ask why you're sending it to them so uh, to kind of add on to the confusion as well uh, you send it the first time it's like hey what is this like no response you send the keep sending the link until they watch it or they block you there's no in between all right thanks for watching bye bye